Yo, yo, what's up, YouTube? Um, it's been a while since I've done a video on engine mods, so I just want to kind of um, clarify and just kind of talk about um, my car um, from a performance perspective. I'm going to do another video kind of talking about, you know, exterior mods, you know, to my vehicle. You know some of the things i've done you know pertaining to the exterior but i want this one to be solely about performance because i know it's a lot of people on um the 2.0 platform b8 b6 b7 who really would like to know what are some things you can do to get some more horsepower um should i get a 3.2 should i get a 4.2 v8 um should i get a s5 what are the pros and cons so I'm just going to kind of give you my personal experience and just talk to you about some things that I've done to ultimately get uh, 453 horsepower on my vehicle. So first and foremost, tune. I started off with a Revo Stage 1 tune. Big bang for your buck. Um, I have Revo and APR that really just brings your car to life. You can start off with that. I didn't need to do anything with the Revo Stage 1 tune. Then I went to Revo Stage 2. Um, in order to have that tune, I had to have um, a downpipe because of all of the pressure and power, and I had to have an intercooler to be able to, to run that tune. Um, after I ran Revo Stage 2, I went to APR Stage 2. Kind of really didn't see much of a difference, so then I ultimately went to um, um, APR K04 V3 file with NGK um, um, uh, cold or spark plug, I believe the in, um, in ngk eights you know what i mean if i say eights to be a car guy before they're seven or colder plugs so i just wanted to just kind of get those stats out all right thanks okay so uh let me first talk about um actually before i tell you about my tune i'm going to get straight to what i've done to get 452 horsepower i know a lot of people don't have that much time to waste okay so the first thing you may notice um on my vehicle um i have a wagner um racing uh intercooler um the wagner intercooler what that did for me and as you can see it's a pretty big intercooler it's from the top and bottom versus a traditional stock one so what that does what that did for me is once i put the intercooler on i noticed that my temperatures in my vehicle um, cause I, I monitor my temperatures were, um, consistent, like a cold start, you know, in the morning when you start your car, you get the best power out of it because, um, the engine is still cool. I noticed that the intercooler just kind of helps sustain that. In addition, I, I noticed a lot more torque and I think the torque is a result from it being more cold there in the combustion chamber. Okay. So the next thing I did is I got, um, an engine air intake. So um the reason why i got the engine air intake is because if you notice it goes all the way down to the bottom and then it kind of meets right here at the vent if you can see it right there so i got that because at first i had a k&n and, and i had the apr and believe it or not the engine um um air intake worked the best um i feel this because it's right there um where the vent is so the air is immediately coming straight into the turbo. Um, whereas when you have, you know, the APR and the KNN air filter is right here and you getting, um, you know, it's going through this ventilating system right here. Then it goes through the box. So you're not getting immediate air. Um, the one thing I was worried about at first is just getting heat up. You can avoid that, you know, through covering up. Um, you know, your actual um, down piping system. But I really didn't see my temperatures drop from that. So I went, that's why I went with the engine um, air intake. Okay, the next thing I did is I did another separate video on this Audi R8 coil. And, and like I said in my other video, if you want to get more detail about it, what that basically does is um, it allows more spark um, and more fire, fire consistently. So like I said before, it has to be the OEM and you can tell from, you know, looking right, right over here, it has a code and then a letter. Um, and that just gave me the power that I needed to run my tune. Um, the next thing I did was, you can't see this one, but I have S3 
um, Bosch, I believe, 500C um, fuel injectors. I, I noticed a drastic change when I changed the fuel injectors. Um, it really put my car on a different level um, as far as, you know, um, just torque, power. It, it, just putting in the S3 um, injectors gave me about a good 20 horsepower. No BS. Um, the air intake just kind of reversed and gave me about 10 extra horsepower. This gave me about 15 extra horsepower. So just if you just want to stay with me. Okay, so the next thing I did is I went ahead and put an oil catch can. The oil catch can, from a performance perspective, it doesn't add any horsepower. But what it does is it enable you, enables you to run more horsepower and not have any issues as far as your engine getting, you know, cloudy from, you know, the fumes or the blow by from the pistons and the rings. But I kind of feel like because the way it's set up, um, don't quote me because I didn't dyno it after this, but I feel like the way it's set up, it adds more crank pressure, which ultimately helps me with a little bit of torque. Uh, you can give or take on that one. So as you can see right here, the next thing is I have um, water methanol. So my water methanol gave me a legit, um, a legit 60 horsepower. Um, what, it, what I did is I have that water meth coming right in here into this throttle body spacer. And what it's doing is it's shooting in right um, after the throttle body. And it's just, it's a fine mist that cools my engine consistently. So that ultimately, because when you use water methanol, it gives you more of a higher, like you're running 104 octane. Um, so that immediately gave me um, tons of power um, to my vehicle. So that's gonna be the water methanol kit. The next thing um, I did is I have um, uh, I have an exhaust system. Uh, I currently have uh, Flowmasters 10 series. I know it's weird that I have Flowmasters in my car. I could have went Miltec, I could have went anything, but I just like the sound of it. And um, uh, that um, actually gave me about a good um, 15 horsepower. Um, but in order to get that 15, I don't know if you can see, but I had to go with a downpipe, a catless downpipe. I do have um, a Cadillac converter after that. I just couldn't handle the, the smell of the fumes and I wanted my car to pass inspection even though it still doesn't, LOL, but you have that downpipe along with um, a muffler delete, the cat back, and I have two resonators to make my car a little bit quiet in the end. And that gave me, um, like I said, like the um, 15 extra horsepower. Uh, let me see what else. Am I missing something? I have a um, GFB uh, diverter valve. Um, and that's right below the turbo. It just helps the um, turbo to um, spool up a lot quicker. Um, it's GFB diverter valve and at the bottom of this video, I'm going to put a link in the description of, you know, how you can buy everything. In addition, of course, I forgot this one. I should have said this one first. I have a KO4 turbo. Um, it's a little bit bigger than the KO3s. And what I notice is with the KO3s, you, it's, it's real punchy. It's real hardcore torque. And I, and I was reading a lot on the forums that KO4s, you lose that torque. But honestly, I feel like I got more. I, you know, I, uh, the difference between the KL3 and the KL4 is on the KL4, I have more top-end power. Like, I used to race Mustangs all the time. I would race them around, you know, from 20 to 80. Then I would back off because every time I would get to, like, around 100, um, they would catch me. But with the KL4, man, um, I'm on another level. Uh, you know, this is straight facts. I'm racing 392s, um, 5.0 GTs, um, uh, new gens, 2016 and above. I'm beating them. Um, S5, my buddy has an S5. I'm beating them. You know, I have another buddy who has an M3. I'm beating them. Um, I know this is crazy with a 2.0 engine for me to say that, but, you know, when I did my last dyno in my buddy shop, um, you know, it's not a Mustang dyno. Um, it got me around um, 400, between 400 and 50 kind of give up in 462 
it just kind of I did three runs I want to average it out to about 455 with the three runs that I did and um I raced the a, a S550 Mercedes I beat him you know um Maserati I beat him you know I had a buddy um who had um um a scat pack and um we were neck and neck um I would say around um 130 he started to pull but by that time I was done I wasn't trying to go you know too too fast on too fast on the racetrack you know if you know what I mean by saying racetrack so um yeah I mean uh these mods definitely um helped me out tremendously and put me on a level to where you know I can compete with the big boys and I'm just amazed every day it's like when people race me um, they think that my car is the RS5, um, just based on, I mean, the custom look that I put to it. I mean, I got the wide body. I got the three-piece wheels on it. So um, they think this, this is just a super, it was made for speed. And no, everyone, when they race me, if they if they lose or if they win, um, they're like, okay, I did a good job against the RS5. They don't feel bad. But if they knew this was a 2.0, then they would probably be like, you know, oh, my God can't believe I just got beat by a 2.0 you know um had a homeboy with a Hellcat he beat me I had you know I had a buddy with um uh a 2003 Mustang he beat me so they just went through different applications with their vehicles and they had you know different mods on their vehicle so I mean ultimately um the cars that I beat I'm, I'm speaking of from a stock perspective of me racing on the street maybe you know they had you know a custom exhaust or something like that